So you founded the company in early 2017, Shane. Um, you're privately held. Mm -hmm. Tell me, you you started uh, bootstrapping, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Started bootstrapping. So tell me, tell me a little bit about about that. I know you. There's been some private equity, and you'll tell me about that. But did you? Did it? Not that it didn't occur to you. Did you have any desire to take institutional capital? No. Why um, not? I mean, I, I've been, I, I've worked in private equity. I, I know what it, I know what happens. And, uh, but sometimes, you know, you just, you just need it to, to, to be able to scale and do what you need to do. You know, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, it's just part of the, part of the game, you know, depending on, you know, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to, um, you know, build a business that, you know, where you're, you know, bringing in a couple hundred or a couple million dollars in annualized revenue. And, you mm -hmm. know, you want to stay, you know, local, you want to do, you know, that's fine. I mean, you don't need to do that, but if, you know, if you want to do what we're doing where you're national and you've got, you know, top 100 clients, you know, uh, fortune 100 clients, and you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be able to deliver and you need to be, you know, you, you have to have the vision. Right. And so I think, um, you know, for, if you're an entrepreneur, I think you, in all honesty, you just got to ask yourself, what do you, you know, what are, what is really your ultimate goal? And then you make that decision. But I bootstrapped, um, basically the first year. Um, and then, uh, and once I, once I was able to, you know, cause I didn't even know if I was going to be able to get, you know, uh, providers to accept my contracts. Right. And then when all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, I get CBS and all of a sudden I get, you know, all these other contracts, I'm like, okay, this mm. is, this is viable. Right. And so then, um, then for the proof of concept, which is I called the Series A, which really been more angel investing, um, mm -hmm. I raised a million dollars, friends and family, and then from okay. there, we um, once we proved the model, um, we uh, we went and we raised a Series B, and that was private equity. And so, um, you know, we got, we found a, a real good lead investor that had a lot of insurance experience. So we, um, you know, we were very strategic how we brought people in, and so that we're going to be on the board, investors. So we have a ton of people that are from the industry. So, you know, at any given time, if I need an introduction someplace or if we need some help somewhere, um, you know, we even on our board, we have a, um, uh, an ERISA attorney and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and he's one of, one of our best board members. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, he helps out with everything. So this is, you know, I, you know, as you're, as you're doing it, you know, you really need to make sure that you're just, you're asking yourself the right questions, what your ultimate goals are. Cause if, you know, cause there are a lot of people, I mean, it makes sense. Look, if I can, if I, if I can make half a million dollars a year with a couple million in revenue and have 10, 10 employees, five employees, whatever it is, Hey, that's a good life. If that's what you want. Great. You know, mm -hmm. you just got to be honest with yourself. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, and in fact, I just, I have this conversation frequently and I just had it, um, on Monday with someone where, you know, I said, listen, it's not, my job is not to tell you how large your company should be, how much money you should want to make. That's not my job to do that. My job yeah. is to ask you the questions right. and help you get to where you need to get yep. based on your answers. Right. So I, I'm curious how are you finding your prospects? Are you finding them? Are they finding you? Is it a combination of inbound and outbound? What does that look like? Yeah, great question. So today um, we are what you'd call broker focused. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, okay. the all the largest benefit brokerage houses uh, yep. we work with. And so, um, and that takes a lot of time and energy, by yes, the way. It it's very, it's, you know, getting credibility there. Um, mm -hmm. So, we, that's where we focus today. We, um, we have a couple other channels that next year we're opening up, um, on the individual space, which will be, um, which will be really good, but I, we really focused on the group first. And the reason is there's, um, there are other companies out there that have done the direct to consumer first, but you're burning through millions and millions in cash just to get it out of your co You know, your yeah. cost of acquisition yeah. is ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which is, I mean, which is fine. I mean, if you, if you're going to raise that much money and you're going to do that, but, um, again, with, with a lot of money comes great responsibility and expectations. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yes, it's, it uh, um, so we went the, we went the group route first. And so now we've got stability, you know, you've got, you know, that, that business just 
is a flywheel. You know, you you do a really good job for them and you get a good reputation. It, they just renew and you just grow that business mm-hmm. year in year. So that's fantastic. Right. So we are now entering into um, the individual market next year, and then we've got right. um, we've got some specialty markets that uh, that we've been uh, white labeling some products for that um, that we're really excited about that we think are going to are are going to go really well for us. They may even be our largest book of business within the next two years. So, yeah, Shane, did you have any trouble initially enrolling brokers into what you were doing? Yeah, so the large brokers wouldn't even talk to me because, and the, and here's the, what's the funny thing is, it's because I wasn't select quote people like that. Right. Yeah. yeah, Well, because, because I'm not even from the industry. So they look at that as a double negative, right? That of course. Yeah. And so uh, I actually worked with Aflac agents my first couple Mm -hmm. of years. That's where really we got a lot of our cases and then just small cases. So the Aflac people were, you know, were really good for us. But um, when we, we hired um, we hired a guy that has 30 years experience and has a great reputation, and he really helped us with the intro into the you know the bigger brokerages, and yeah, he had a lot terrific. of credibility, and so that helped us mm-hmm. a lot. And that was almost three years ago, so um, so that was how we got in. Yeah. Do, do you consider yourself an insure tech? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a we've got a tech stack with. Um, so we, uh, um, from our mobile app and then, um, yeah. and then internal proprietary software. Got it. So what's, I mean, is it like typical insurance where you need at least two employees, two full-time employees to be able to buy what you have? Yeah. So f- for us, we need, we need at least 25 enrolled today, but with the new individual okay. plans, we'll be able to go down. That'll to one. change obviously. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And is that, is the price going to be higher though? Actually, uh, that's what I wonder, believe it or not. No. I mean, the pricing that, um, we're working with, uh, the carrier that we're working with, um, Mm -hmm. the pricing actually was the same, which I couldn't believe it. So usually you're right. There's more risk involved. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked, but, um, but you know, with our, our plans, so where it's interesting. So if you remember, you know, my parents, my mom tells me about it all the time. She's like, oh, you have insurance like what insurance used to be, which is, you know, it was first dollar coverage, right? You would pay, yes. you know, the insurance mm-hmm. company would say, oh, we're paying $100 for this visit or $50. Mm-hmm. And that's what we pay, mm-hmm. right? And it's on a schedule. Well, that's what we do is so, so from a, um, and some of our plans, so I'll give you an example. We, um, and we're different in the sense of, you're, it's called indemnity, limited medical, fixed indemnity. That's how the yeah. indemnity plans. So we pay a fixed amount. Well, we we do things a little bit differently in the sense that before they would say, oh, well, we'll pay, let's say, $75 for a physician visit and you get two visits a year, right? Right. We, we, right. Don't, we don't limit the number. So, of, sounds like my plan. <laughs> yeah. We don't, we actually don't limit the number of visits. We actually right. say, here's a bucket of money. So let's say $5,000 or 100000 whatever it is. Spend and it how you want. Exactly. How high you want. Yeah. And then you can love it. You can just go, you can choose. And so we have that. And then we have what's called a AME and accident medical expense policy mm-hmm. um, where it's per accident. The low plan is 5,000. The high plan is 10,000. But what's really nice is there's no deductible. We don't have any deductibles. We don't have co-insurance. That's fantastic. And, and so we really focus on the user experience, making sure, I mean, mm-hmm. it, you know, what's really interesting is six years ago, our plan was 40% higher than what it is today. And we had less benefits. So we've gone the exact opposite. We've actually so lowered our all pricing. The other carriers. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so our whole goal is really providing affordable access to care. I mean, you'll hear me say yeah. that a million times. And the reason is, well, you know, we don't even use, I mean, we have access to an RX plan if you want a fully insured mm-hmm. plan, but we don't mm-hmm. recommend it. And the reason is mm-hmm. we literally get the top 50 drugs for 40 of Pennies. them, 40, yeah, 40 of them less than 10 yeah. bucks. And then the other, yep. the other 10, the last 10, we get less for 20 bucks. So why pay, yeah. you know, I agree. Why pay a $10 copay for a generic mm-hmm. that, Cost five dollars. It, it makes. No I, sense. I, I mean, I totally agree. I don't. I don't have it on my plan. Yeah, it doesn't. There's, no, there's no need to. Carol Schultz here. Thanks for watching this excerpt from Authentically Successful. The conversation doesn't end there. 
So if you want to hear this episode in full and all my conversations with many other successful founders and CEOs, please visit verticalelevation.com slash podcast. 